afternoon, man. Husband and wife, how we doing? Doing good. All right. So yeah, y'all came down from Jersey. How was the drive down, first of all? Wasn't bad. Okay. All right. So you, but before we started, we, we were having a conversation. You said you'd been to a couple of doctors for this issue. Yes. Podiatrists even, and they, they told you there was nothing that can really be done. Correct. All right. That's, that's, uh, for, for me, that's, you know, that's very frustrating because that's nothing could be further from the truth. All right. So what we're going to do is take samples of the nail, send it to the lab. Lab's going to do a couple of things. They're going to look, look at it under the microscope and they're going to do DNA tests to see what there is. It's causing your nails to look like this, man. Okay. And how long has this been a problem for you now? Uh, probably since high school. Since high school? Okay. That was a long time ago. That's a long <laughs> 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 But you said the wife's been trying to help you out at, at home? Yes. All right. That's good, man. That's good. I mean, you got a built-in podiatrist in the house. All right. It's a start. All right, but let's get you going here. Doesn't do it for free. I, love you too. <laughs> I can dig it. I can dig it, man. All right, now. Do any of the nails cause you any pain, any discomfort? Only when they get too long. Okay. And where are we now as far as too long? They, they no, no, no. Longer than this? Yeah, sometimes mm -hmm. they've gotten longer. Okay. All right, so quite a buildup underneath here. That's typical of what we find. Here we go. It's not hurting as I trim it down, is it? No. Okay. So you've been following the channel up in Jersey? Mm-hmm. All right. Appreciate that. Yeah, the mis misinformation about these issues is unfortunately pretty rampant about the fact that we can either do anything about it or that some of the treatments that we do for it, particularly the medications, are dangerous. And that's uh, erroneous as well. Okay. Go. And so what have you been doing at home for this? Besides, you know, trying to keep them trimmed down? <clears throat> uh, putting on urea, urea cream. Urea cream, okay. The other cream was the... Ketoconazole. Ketoconazole, that's it. It's an antifungal we use typically for athlete's foot. The skin, it doesn't do much for the nails because it doesn't penetrate the nail itself. But it's very common to use that for skin. But you also have the issue between the toes. So what I'm going to do is prescribe a medication called... Cause Trimazole to go between your toes because that comes in a gel form. Okay. And you don't want to use creams or ointments between the toes because it stays wet all day. You don't want that because that, that maintains the maceration that you already have. Got it. So the gel dries after a few minutes of putting it on. So that's why we like to use that in this case. The SOL G1M Plus is the exercise bike to help you meet your fitness goals. Using seamless technology that is compatible with popular fitness and streaming apps, the advanced screencasting will revolutionize your workout. There are multiple programs in the Yesol app to match your fitness level. At $499, it is less than half the price of Peloton bikes. Click on the link to order. Use my promo code DCFTDR for an instant $100 discount. Stay consistent and enjoy the benefits of regular exercise. Keep pedaling towards a healthier and fitter you. <laughs> For how long now? Like 12 years. Wow. How long have you been married? 10 years. 10. Okay. So you had her on the, on the job even before you got married. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's love. Married. That's love right there, boy. <laughs> that's what that is. So we're taking my curette here and cleaning out the gutters. You see how that's this overgrown skin around the cuticle. Okay. We're going to really clean all this up today. All right. So you have this, this thickness of the nail bed. See all that? Often when the nail get thick like that, you can get this buildup underneath it. It's just like having a callus. There we go.
So what the, what do you do up in Jersey? I am a supervisor at a collection agency. Okay. And then I also work part time at a grocery store. Okay. So at the grocery store, unless you're in the back counting receipts, you're on your feet a lot, right? Nonstop. Nonstop. Stop, so you know this is that's part of the issues is the the pounding that the, our feet take every day. And what type of shoes are you required to work at the grocery store? Steel toe. Steel toe. All right. So now I can always tell steel steel toe shoe feet. Mm -hmm. I can see them coming a mile away. <laughs> All right. Because the steel toe by design are for protection, right? But that added bit of protection, particularly in the toe area, the toe box of the shoe, is uh, it cuts down on natural airflow. So if you know your ten feet tend to sweat a bit, or what have you, or it's left a little moist after a shower, you know they, they won't dry out throughout the day. All right, so he has all this in here. All right, so it definitely looks like you have an athlete's foot between your toes as well. Okay. Okay. Which is why I want to prescribe the gel instead of the ketoconazole cream that you already have. Okay. The ketoconazole. Conazole cream would be good for the bottom of the feet, but between the toes is a no-go. See how this is just peeling right up? There it goes. There we go. You cleaned up. So be sure after your showers that you do some extra drying between your toes. Sorry about that. And you, I recommend that you use a, a towel separate from your bath towel that you dry the rest of yourself with. Okay. Here we go. Okay, let's go to the B side over here. So over here, yeah, same thing, a lot of buildup between the toes. What started first, would you say, the, the nails or the skin? Um, or did they start about the same time? Probably about the same time. At the same time, okay. Because it is not uncommon to have both. Like I say, it might have been the skin and the itching first, and then the nails were far behind. Okay. So for your grocery store position, how many pair of the uh, steel toe sh uh, boots do you have? Just one. Just one? Okay. So what I'm going to definitely recommend for you, brother, is that you get a second pair. And this is why you would need a second pair. Because these organisms that cause the problems in the skin mm -hmm. and in the nails, they're also inside your shoes. So what you're going to want to do is get a second pair to alternate to give the, the pair you wore that day a chance to breathe. Okay. All right. And you're also gonna to want to disinfect the shoes that you wore today, like these sneaks you came in here today. But when the day is over, and you know you're not gonna put shoes back on again, mm -hmm. go ahead and uh, spray out the inside of the shoes from the heel all the way down to the toe. Use uh, surface disinfectant, Lysol, microband, something like that. Or unless you, or you can get a shoe spray, and spray out the inside of the shoes, and then leave them alone for a couple of days. Okay. That way you're uh, killing the organisms that are also inside the shoes, and so you're just not keeping that vicious cycle going. Every time you put those shoes on, especially you have to wear the same shoes for work. I see this all the time, and folks have to wear shoes like that for a particular position, mm -hmm. and. The ones that have the problem the most are the ones who only uh, use one pair of shoes. So you get a second, uh, rotate through them, disinfect them. That'll help a lot. Look, one bit there. I see it a lot in, you know, construction workers, warehouse. Yeah. Uh, People have, have to wear a certain pair of shoes, mail carriers, food service, you name it. Okay. I've been in the warehouse for almost 10 years. 
mm. before I got the desk job, so. I guess enough for the lab to play with here. Let's clean these up here now. Into the, the foot care business. When I was an undergrad, I, I attended Prairie View A&M in Texas. All right. Class of 90. And when I was there, I was a biology major. So being in medicine or health or something related mm -hmm. was always part of my goal. And then... The then seven podiatry schools were encouraged by HHS to increase their class sizes because they could see the writing on the wall that more podiatrists were going to be needed in this country. They saw where diabetes was headed, you know, in particular. And they could already see that at that time there weren't enough podiatrists and there really weren't going to be enough podiatrists right. in the 30 years where they had uh, projected that diabetes was going to be a real major problem. And they were not wrong. So they pushed the schools to do that and that's how I ended up in New York. And the rest is history, man. I've been doing this 25 years now. Yeah, I believe in approaching these issues just like any other medical issue. Mm -hmm. You know, I've never heard of somebody going in with a bad tooth or something like that. They go to the dentist and look in the mouth and say, oh, there's nothing I can do about it. And so I've been having this ongoing battle within podiatry and outside podiatry that these issues can be cured. You know, so I just keep putting, fighting a good fight, do what I do, and let people see for themselves. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's not enough just to trim the nails. Mm -hmm. You also have to clean the nail bed as much as you can. Mm -hmm. Notice that I'm basically filing down the area where the cuticle is, but I'm not removing the cuticle. The cuticle does serve a purpose. And the purpose of the cuticle is to keep the nail root uh, clean. Keep it from infection and moisture and whatnot. Uh, you've had this problem for a long time. The reason being because the cause was never really identified and then it certainly hasn't been treated. I mean, I've had People have had this problem for over 20 years. That's is, I think. And they've heard the same thing. Well, there's nothing you can do about it. Uh, any medication that could do anything about it, not good for you. Right. And for some people, it, it can create some, you know, some significant health issues. And not just a cosmetic problem, you know? Yeah. Not just about how it looks.
Now you see how thick the skin is on the nail bed here? Mm -hmm. That's part of the infection. So a lot of people fall short. It's not dealing with that. See, all that needs to go. Otherwise, it's just continuing to feed the fungus under the nail. You're gonna hang around for a while. You're headed back up the highway. Stay back up the highway. Stay back up the highway. Thin it out as much as possible. And it is time to use the medication. It is less the medication to fight against. Well, part of it is biomechanics, or most of it is actually biomechanics. When we walk, part of the job of the big toe is for us to push off. It's like a springboard mm -hmm. when we walk. So the big toe takes a lot of burn of the body weight, a lot of the punishment. So as it does that, uh, it's going to take more of a beating inside the shoe, therefore a thicker nail. Being a bigger toe also, it has more surface. More surface for the fungus to get in and act up. This is Kevin Jefferson, the DC Foot Doctor. Thank you very much for watching this video. Like it with a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Ring the bell so you will know when a new video has been uploaded. Share it with your family and friends. If you leave a comment or a question, it may be featured in a future video. But most importantly, take care of your feet.